yeah, Pete, we got this. I've done, I've got a bunch of these. You're going to be fine. What if I'm not? Then where is he as far as his professionalism? He told me something that's not true. So a doctor would never be so unprofessional as to say, this procedure's going to work or this procedure's not going to work. They're going to be professional enough to talk in terms of what? Applications. Ratios or probabilities. Because that's the only thing we know to be true. Is historically we have a success rate of. And so if you if you learn to talk to sellers in terms of probability instead of yes or no, it becomes very powerful. And it's the most professional thing you can say. Because we don't know. I, my little neighborhood, my farm in South County for years, there were four models. I remember I had a plan two listed, and these people had a pool, and they wanted the price, the comps for the plan two, and they wanted full value for their pool. Now, is that going to happen? No. What's Maybe. the appraiser going to give a homeowner for, for a pool? As far, let's, let's say they spent 40 grand putting in the pool. The appraiser is going to give them what? Ten to twenty. About a third. Ten to twenty. He's going to give them about a third in value, right? Well, this seller said, "Well, I'm not going to sell unless I get the price of the comp and then what I put into the pool." Now, the probability of that happening is low. What actually happened was I showed it to somebody who said, "This is the plan we want." And by the way, as soon as we close escrow. The tractor is going to be in the backyard digging the pool because we want to pull. So now that buyer could say, great, I'd rather pay them the 40 grand and have the pool finished the day I move in than to have to go through the aggravation of closing escrow, you know, the tractor wrecks the lot, well, the landscaping to get to the spot where you're digging the pool. I mean, it's a hassle, right? So that particular buyer paid the price because it made sense for them. Hmm, that's probability. So, yeah, I mean, this is such a professional way to talk to people. I'll tell you what else it does. It changes the dynamic from the salesperson saying to the seller, you can't sell for that amount of money. And the seller saying, now I'm ticked off because you don't see how special my home is. You don't believe in my home. I've hired the wrong person because they don't see value in my home, right? I mean, do we deal with this all the time? All the time. So it becomes adversarial because the seller says, I want this, and the agent says, you can't have that. It, not, not many words, but basically that's, that's our message. So it becomes adversarial, which is a very bad way to try and accomplish a goal working with somebody when you're, when you're adversarial. Now, when you speak in terms of probability, like that person with the plan two at the pool, they want this price. The first thing I said to them was, if anybody can get this price, I can. Here's my track record in this neighborhood. I sold every plan at top value. If anybody can get that, I can. But that really doesn't mean anything. But when I, when I said, here, here is the picture. Here's the buyer pool. Here's how many we're competing against. They could, they, I left the door open that that could be a possibility that they could sell at that and if anybody could do it, it was me. And at the same time, leading them to the market so they understood clearly that, that the odds were not in their favor. And even though it was a low probability, they were okay with that. They were actually retiring and moving to Hawaii. And so, hey, we got time. So with that, instead of adversarial, now I'm their biggest advocate and we are arm and I can't lift the shoulder very well why I'm going for surgery. So I'll go this way. So I'm arm in arm with the, and we're going after the same goal together. Does that make sense? Changes the dynamic completely with the seller because now I'm the advocate. We're going after this goal, doggone it. If anybody can get it, I can get it for you. And now we're arm in arm instead of adversarial. It changes the whole dynamic. Just making sense? Absolutely. Just the psychology behind this is really interesting. So uh, we're, I, I'm going to need another property. Let's take another property that's on the market that hasn't sold for a while, and you know, let's break it down. Crystal, we're going to have the MLS? In two seconds. We will. Okay. So 
Before that, uh, let's do, uh, I'll read some sales, need or want, and Roberta, you're heading to another office, so say good morning and we'll, we'll let, you, let you go. Good morning, everyone. Does everybody know you can put a home warranty on a property not going through an escrow transaction? Does everybody know that? So if you guys are doing a lease or you know friends, family, your sphere of influence that would like to put a home warranty on their home right now, you can do that. I have a lot of people that uh, would farm their farm and talk about that. It's a great goodwill piece. Um, the price is just slightly higher than the prices I handed out on our carts. So please don't quote them this. But if you guys are interested in talking about that, please call me. I'm happy to get you into a home warranty. And it doesn't matter who it is, it could be your mom, your friend, even you, and it doesn't have to be owner-occupied. Okay, and then also Scott mentioned seller's coverage last week. If you haven't put seller's coverage on your listing, you're missing out. So call me for details. Question. Robert, what do you think the guesstimate is for an increase so we can have a, a walking idea? Is it 5% more, 10% more? It's maybe more? only like $40 more. Uh, it's that, really that's, cheap. That's the same. And yeah. you can, yeah. and you can so, pay you. monthly. A few, few percent more. And yeah. you can pay monthly on that plan yeah. and cancel at any time. So there's really no risk. Thank you. It's awesome. That helps. Every little value add on the listing presentation can make the difference. Something as simple as I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay for a home warranty for your home, insurance policy on your home while you're on the market. And it's a dollar a day. All right, um, good morning, Cam. Hi there. Now we're actually recording the meeting. Crystal, are we recording right now? Okay, so so, so that the people watching at home can see you and you stand right, right here. Oh. I should have told her about that. But. Oh, I was gonna tell you a quick funny story. My son bought a house in Reno for 275 that he was gonna flip because you know those shows today, we watch Flip and Flop and we love them. So he was determined he was going to fix up this house and sell it. And he, I told you how he had gotten all this mail and somebody had sent a letter. He works up in L.A. to him. He picked a realtor that had sent him a handwritten letter to his office in L.A. So he picks this realtor, fixes up the house. It takes about six, seven months, but it's in hardwood floors was built in 1932, it had asbestos, it had mold, he spent way more money than he even imagined. Okay, so he decides he's gonna price the house. He hires the realtor that sent him the note, he prices the house. A month, two months, no offers, showings, no offers, no offers. Every week he says to me, Mom, do you think I should fire my agent? I said, there's nothing wrong with your agent. We would drive up some weekends, rent a truck, put, go to Lowe's, put paint, you know, in the truck, put together furniture, paint the shutters. We kept trying to improve it, make it look better. I talked him into staging it. We uh, put together, he put together furniture. Now we're in the fourth month, no offer. Fifth month, no offer. Same question to me, Mom. Do you think JD is just like not, he shows it, but he doesn't seem excited about it. I said, Robert, let me ask you something. Why don't you call him? He's a good realtor. He's a great guy. Call him and ask him what he thinks the house will sell at. Just ask him the truthful question. So Robert had priced his house probably 50 or 60,000 too high. So we asked the agent and the agent said, you know, Robert, you priced it. You know, I, I told you in the beginning, it should, it's probably gonna sell at a certain price. Robert said, okay, let's price it. A week later, it has sold. So I said to him, it's just listening to your agent. I mean, he was right. It's his experience, you know? And so just sometimes tell people don't list their house. I mean, be honest with them. Because he sat for many, many months thinking that there's something wrong with the agent, there's something wrong. And it was really the truth of the matter was he priced it too high. So get, get people to be, you know, tell them the truth anyway. So. <laughs> You're happy. I've been happy before. <laughs> And that's so applicable to what we're talking about because if that agent had sat down with Robert and yeah. said, show him these vital statistics, mm -hmm. here's how big your buyer pool is, how many homes like yours in this city are selling every month, and here's how many are competing for that four, five, three, whatever that number is. Now Robert, who's a very smart guy, Oxford guy, would certainly look at that information and say, I'm not competitive. 
And there's something powerful about that inductive approach, where you're just leading someone to the point that they have the aha moment, as opposed to telling them what they need to do. Remember, we have an agenda. We are salespeople. We, we benefit if the seller prices the home low to sell. And sellers know that. And because, that, because of that, there's this dynamic of, I don't know if I can trust you telling me I need to lower my price because I think you're just trying to get to a faster paycheck. Right? <clears throat> and so letting the numbers speak, letting the market speak, is so wonderful because now I'm out of the loop. My opinion doesn't really matter because I'm not buying that listing. I'm not part of the buyer pool. By the way, the seller's not buying their house back either. So their opinion isn't really the relevant opinion. Uh, Getting this? Yep. Uh, what do we do first? Needs or wants or read sales? Have some needs and wants? Brenda, you have a house on preview today. I hope so. I just got a text that may indicate otherwise, but with the guard gate at Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, everybody. Brenda McCroskey. Um, two things. One, we just um, pocket pre, pre MLS on 4720 Cortland, which is in Cameo Highlands, that in Cameo Shores and Shorecliffs and Irvine Harris are the top four neighborhoods in all of Corona Del Mar. Um, and it is priced at two, three, nine, nine. It's a um, 18, 88, about 1900 square foot, totally redone. He bought it 18 months ago, had to redo everything, sewer, electricity, everything's been redone. New pool, new spa, really cute little place in Cameo Highlands, four private access beaches, uh, really, really cool um, mid-century modern style. And um, asking 2399, which is more than a million dollars less than any property in the cameos. Um, and um, it will be on the MLS in about two weeks, but he is more than happy to pre sell it. And uh, so call me if you'd like to see it, it's easy nice. to show. Um, and then we have 27 curl on today, I hope. Um, evidently, the guard gate at Jasmine Creek is saying only previews on Thursday, so we're working on that right now. So it may just be Thursday. We're just doing sorry. a showing. Pardon? We're just doing a showing. We're just doing a showing, all of us, okay? All right. <laughs> who wants to be the client? Who wants Yay. to be the builder? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's coming out tomorrow. Um, it's the only now, as of one going into escrow today, the only available property in Jasmine Creek. I assume you all know about it. It's Corona Del Mar, great little community right off of Marguerite. Private guard gated, private pools, private tennis courts, clubhouse, neat stuff going on. Three bedroom, three bath has been redone top to bottom. She's a gourmet chef, they entertain all the time. Beautiful, three bedroom, three bath, I told you that. Um, best, most private backyard I've ever seen in Jasmine Creek. It is beautiful. Most of them are kind of open and no privacy. This is beautiful. And then from the upstairs, master uh, and, and secondary bedroom, you have spectacular uh, Ocean and Catalina views, and uh, we are at 1740 on that. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to come and see it today. I'll let you know in a bit. If not, come Thursday, please. Okay. We will stand by. Thank you. Who else? Let's network and sell some homes while, uh, while we're spending this 45 minutes hour together. How about an update on rates? And you're walking very well, by the way, Michelle. Well, if I knew you were going to record this, I would have brought my knee trolley so I look like a gazelle instead of an orangutan. You look terrific. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brenda, I know the guard gate. I used to live in Jasmine Creek. I'd give him a call. By the way, this is a great price. I sold my two bedroom, two bath two years ago, May, for a million eight. This is a great price. Just to let you know. Anyway, it's really exciting right now. We have Super Jumbo to $15 million. The investors are really getting excited about what they think the future holds for real estate. I'm doing an 80, um, it's an 89.9% .9 CLTV to, and that's up to a million eight, not 15 million, but a million eight, which is incredible. And one thing about 34 years experience, he called me after hours last night, gave me the thumbs up to lock. I could simply have hit the send button and locked him in and he'd been perfectly happy. But I went the extra step, which all you guys do with your sellers and your buyers. I went online and took a look at the market. 
Now, is that a little bit of a risk? Of course, a lot can happen when New York opens up and we finally wake up. But based on what I interpreted, I didn't see any chance of rates increasing and a chance that they might drop. I got up at 5.30 this morning. By God, that rate did drop. All right. So I can't wait to call this realtor and hear his buyer and say, guess what? Because we took the extra step, waited a little bit, did a little bit more analysis, your rate went down on a million three, an eighth of a point. That sounds small, yeah. but monthly that's significant. Anyway, Michelle how much Zabelli. Money, how much money a month does that equate to? That's a few hundred dollars. It's a few hundred dollars. Yeah. That's a big deal. And with his 10% second, he can take that savings, put it towards his line of credit, pay that off. I got him 1.99% over prime. Do you realize that's 5.4%? You no know people are paying on their credit cards, their car loans. He can pay that down, use it, get rid of all of his credit card debt. This is amazing. Anyway, Michelle DeBella with Home Services Lending it is a pleasure to be back. We've got James Bond playing in the background over here. All right, who else? The insider information. John, good morning. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, everybody. Uh, just Huntington Beach, for those of you who uh, work there or might know something, I'm looking for a home up to 1.8. Three bedrooms would be fine for, of course, as close as to the water as we can. Uh, on the numbered streets, on the numbered streets downtown. So a house, three, four bedrooms, maybe five, up to one eight, would really appreciate it. And uh, the better condition, the better. So thank you. And they're coming down next weekend or the week after. So if you have anything in your pocket or know something that's listed, I might have missed it, or you have it. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Amy Lila Feingold. Might have one. Lima Oh, Lima. Lima Pankellis. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Good time to introduce <laughs> Jerry Hemberger, who has joined us from a competitor. And you've been in the you've been in residential. Well, you do commercial too, but right. in the residential space, about a year. About a year. And you're coming in somewhere about. 12 million? 10, 10, 12 million, yeah. And so, yeah. I'm, lo I'm loving that. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm loving that you moved from that company to our company, <laughs> and so let's grow together. Well, but uh, please welcome Jerry Henberger. Great to have you with us. Well, first of all, thank you. I feel a real honor to be working with all of you because uh, just in you know the short time I've been doing this, you guys are the cream of the crop, so I, I feel like it's a real, real honor for me to be working with all of you and I really appreciate it and I'll, I'll just tell you briefly how I got here. Uh, Randy Ora sold my house and I just really admired what he did and throughout the whole time I, I was working in Mission Viejo and he just gave his time to me just telling me how to be successful and that to me extols the virtues of Berkshire Hathaway and by the way I, I grew to know Randy because Steve Games introduced me to Randy saying he's the guy that can sell your house so anyway I feel like I'm where I need to be right, right. now and so, so I we. really appreciate it but I do have a buyer and I know I this may be uh, stretching it a little bit but he's got three and a half million he's looking for a tear down that he can build his own house and he wants to be on um, Balboa you know the, the harbor there put a 55-foot boat in front of them with a dock. So I know it's a stretch, but if anybody has anything at all, let me know. I appreciate it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, James Gray may have a pocket or two on Lido. Jerry, uh, James Gray is a guy that you should contact. Oh, great. Okay. okay, thank you. All right, anybody else? Going once, going twice. Lila, good morning. I love when Lila comes up because there's going to be a story that just <laughs> no puts story. a smile on my face. No story. I just have two properties that okay. I would love for you all to sell. All right. I have a new listing in Irvine in Northwood in the Guard Gated community. Um, it's nestled back. It's really a unique uh, property because it has no neighbors on two sides. And the trees are really mature palms, so they grow all the way around. So even on the second floor, you can't see into your neighbors, which if you know the Guard Gated communities in Irvine, everybody can kind of pass the soap across the second floor. It's beautiful. It's priced at 1.46. There's a little bit of room in the price. They're ready to sell. It's been on the market one week. Um, and if anybody has any buyers in Irvine, um, bring them to see it. It's beautiful. 24 Park Crest 
in the gated community of Northwood, which is okay. uh, North Irvine. Really beautiful Northwood um, High School, very high, you know, sought after uh, school district. I also have another one and it's a little far away, but if anyone has uh, some investors or clients or for yourself and you wanna spend $400,000 on a beautiful uh, 3,300 square foot house right in the middle of wine country near Temecula. It's right in the middle of all the wineries. They're developing 40 new wineries um, and there's just a lot of uh, construction going on out there. So uh, it has like a little casita downstairs too. So if you wanna rent it out, it's 2,500 a month. And then you can block off the bottom level, which is your own private master walk-in closet kitchenette that you can use for yourself anytime you want to go wine tasting and rent out the rest of the house. So if anybody has a 1031 client and need to just drop 400 and a quarter somewhere, let me know. Any views? Any views? Yeah. Okay. It's a great location. I just go. <laughs> Somebody kick his Thank you <laughs> They were filming this. Oh. <laughs> New listing. New listing. Yeah, just, just, just family. Just a family squabble. <laughs> he almost pushed my wife down the stairs. <laughs> almost. Eastside Costa Mesa. New listing. Going on the market uh, the Thursday or Friday. Uh, Eastside Costa Mesa near 23rd and orange uh, 789 three bedrooms two and a half baths uh completely remodeled beautiful recently completely remodeled three two and a half baths all right what would it rent for uh up to 3500 maybe more maybe a few all right 32 to 3500 all good morning thank you Remember, we are filming, so be appropriate. <laughs> okay. Instead of me telling you um, what I'm looking for, if you have a pocket in either Newport, Corona Mar, or Eastside Costa Mesa, I got buyers for all three of those that I've been working with pretty steady. So if you have a pocket, you got to call me, my, or you can email me. It's P D O L K A S at yahoo.com. My office is right there, and you can call me Paul. I think, I think it's just so great that we got a new phone system, and Paul literally does not know what his extension is. <laughs> or we would have heard it. Nor do we. Thanks for saying that. Now, okay. Okay, good news. Um, 27 curl, we can get in. Do not mention the words open house, whatever you do, please. Okay, okay. Just you're going to 27 curl. Thank you very much. See you there. This is not yet on the market. Tomorrow. Go see this property. Call your clients this afternoon. Let me tell you about something that's not yet on the market. Great opportunity. Besides, that's a five minute there and five minute back, so I hope everybody takes the time to go. All right, is that it? I'm going to read sales. Do you have the sheet for the legal tip? Why don't you pass that out while I'm reading sales? Open escrows. In the last week, here we go. Mina and Joseph Magami, nine cent for pay, Newport Beach, seller at two five. Mark Simon, seven eleven and seven eleven point five. Jasmine Cornell Mar, seller at a million nine. Ronnie and Serena Modina in Irvine, seller at a million five two five. Mary Lou Skronsky, Murano Place in Costa Mesa, buyer at a million three seven five. Joanne Launder and Cheryl Laidlaw, Irvine in Newport Beach, buyer at a million three three five. Tom Nelson Brindisi in Irvine, buyer at a million forty. Ronnie and Serena also sold a house on Brindisi this week, seventy nine Brindisi seller at nine sixty. And Ronnie and Serena sold Borghese in Irvine, buyer at nine forty. Jerry Henberger. Jerry, coming in with a sale. You, I gotta love that. 310 Canoe Pond in Costa Mesa, buyer at, at 880. Jacqueline Moran, Delphine, Newport Coast, seller at 855. Jenny Holland Hartman and her farm in Orange. She double ended that at 800. David Hine and Tricia Suchdave, double ended Bryce up in Cerritos at 720. Joanne Burgos. 
in Fullerton, which is her her haunt. Seller at 565. Cost team wind gap in orange, double ended at 495. We close this week. Lila Feingold Franklin uh, out of area Culver City, double ended at a million two fifty. Very nice. Debbie Matheson closed this to Trucha. Newport Beach seller at a million one six five. Ronnie and Serena Scarlet and Irvine buyer at a million oh three. Leanne Bowman Vista Dorado Newport Beach seller at nine sixty. Hale Shidbash Newark in Irvine buyer at eight twenty. Kosh Team Peyton out of area buyer at six eighty. Jenny Holland Kosala down in Mission Viejo seller six thirty two. Ed Cruz Paseo Vista, also South County, San Clemente buyer at 630, McMonagle team Mill Pond down in Capo Beach, seller 610, Andy Howe, Pemberton in Laguna Niguel, buyer at 580, Ishiahama Sunfield up in Lakewood, seller at 490, Derice and Pat Quinlan, Close Raven in Laguna Hills, double ended at 490, and Sir Abandon Sycamore, uh, inland buyer at 372, Art Rivera, Art Rivera, Tangelo, in Newport Beach, buyer at 368, and Ed Cruz Park Avenue Inland, a seller at 220. So congratulations to all. Good reminder with those sales, and some of those are out of Orange County, but in Orange County, we have 84% of all the transactions in Orange County are under a million, 84%. So that leaves 16% for everything over a million. Guess what percent of that 16% is a million to two million. Seventy-five percent. So when you break it down, you know, you can see. So, you know, I mean we absolutely want to keep our focus on Newport and the higher end properties, but you know, the, the, the facts show that there are a lot of transactions being done, you know, in those other price ranges and it's just only smart to take advantage of it. All right. Did we hand out the legal tip? Everybody have a sheet? CAR form CC contingency removal. Cancellation of contract. Cancellation of contract. Oh, cancellation, of cancellation of contract. Or, um, cancellation of contract. Yeah, yeah. Virtuals, I don't know what this is. I've never seen it before. I'm just going to have a heart attack. So very often we'll have a, it occurs that a buyer decides not to move forward. And so often I see them write on that form a very specific reason as to why they're not moving forward. I don't ever, ever, ever want you to do that. So there's a couple options that I like. Actually, I need a, I need a, a copy of it for me. I'll just grab this one. Couple options that I'm really good with. On paragraph one, buyer cancels the agreement for the following reason. So want you check one A or one B and 1A as permitted by the good faith exercise of paragraphs blank of the agreement. What do you write in? 14B. 14B, which covers all sorts of buyer inspection. I'm good with 14B. I'm not good with anything else. And here's the reason. If you cite a specific reason, now that reason has to fall under the test of reasonableness because a buyer and a seller in a contract have an obligation to what's called good faith and fair dealing. And if you cite a reason that is arguably not reasonable as a reason to, con to, to cancel, you've now armed that seller to fight. I don't ever want to do that. Does that make sense? So you're not, your buyer is not obligated to ever give a specific reason, so they never should. Another option that I'm okay with is paragraph 1G where it says other. I'm also good with you writing in uh, you know, per contingency rights under the contract. Same thing. It doesn't limit it to paragraph 14B, but I'm good with that too. Is that? Hmm? Hmm? 14B is fine. Uh, if for some reason that's an issue with a buyer, you, you, we're accomplishing the same goal you know, with that blank line saying for contingency rights under the contract. You can't fight that. Is that good? Everybody good with that? Yeah. You see it all the time. So, I'll tell you why. Another dynamic is that the seller and the seller's agent press us for a reason. 
we say to the other agent, we're going to cancel, the first thing they say is, why? So don't fall into the trap. Don't need, you have no legal obligation to give a specific why, and you never should. Okay, let's talk about managing the listing. Who's got a listing that's been out there not selling that we could kind of break down? What do you have? Okay, got one in Huntington. What's the price? So a million three in Huntington Harbor. We can use that. Would me? I'm, I'm good with that. If everybody prefer a Newport property, that doesn't matter. Huntington Harbor. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Let's uh, give Crystal the address. We'll pull it up. Here you go. Okay, let me come up and give it to you. All right, so we'll pull that up. <coughs> so with a house in Huntington Harbor, the first thing that that seller wants to look at is Huntington Harbor. Just, I want to know how I'm competing in Huntington Harbor. And that's going to be a part of this, but the bigger picture is there is an identifiable number of homes in Huntington Beach selling for a million three every month. And that's the, there we go. Okay, there's the listing. Can I stand here and do it or do I need to? I would recommend you stand closer to the screen. Okay. And the, and the camera? Yeah. Did you already turn it? It's already turned. Crystal is always a step ahead of me. Okay. 3481 Aquarius Huntington Beach. Nice looking home. 2,900 square feet, uh, Huntington Harbor, terrific. All right, so let's start with figuring out how many homes are selling in Huntington Beach at a million three every month. So why don't you pull up solds? Shall we take a million two to a million four? Yeah, because they're ranging up to one, Scott, and that right next door, they're, they're selling for 1699. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. Ask one one to one 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 to one five. Yeah. One one to one five. Pull it up. If it's too big a number, then I'm going to narrow the price range because I'm going to get. I want to get a number that illustrates the point. The point is this: the buyer pool is this big, and the competing pool is this big. Those are the vital statistics. So you can vary the numbers to illustrate the point. Back how far, Scott? Hmm? Back how far is the question? As far as it takes to demonstrate that that buyer pool is predictable, it has nothing to do with my opinion. So I'll start with 2016. Let's see how many have sold. What did we do? One one to one five. Yes. One one to one five. Huntington Beach. Why do I want to take Huntington Beach and not Huntington Harbor? Because 